Hello, I'm Reverend Scott Whipperman, pastor here at First Presbyterian Church in Helena, Montana, and we welcome you to our worship service today. I'd like you to know that regardless of who you are or where you are in your journey of faith, you're welcome here at First Presbyterian Church. Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark in the 12th chapter. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplace and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. And Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put, and he watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she has to live on. The word of the Lord. Well, there are some scenes in our life that just have danger zone written all over them. Danger zone, do not enter. Things like buildings wrecked by earthquakes or battles in the battlefield or fires. These all just say, like I say, danger, do not enter. But sometimes we choose to enter into a danger zone. In the movie Top Gun, Kenny Loggins had a theme song, Danger Zone, that went along with this movie. And the song talks about entering the zone where you're pushing things to the limits. Both the limits of the jet that was being flown and the limits of your ability to control the power of that jet. And some of the lyrics go, out along the edges, always where I burn to be, the further on the edge, the hotter the intensity. Sometimes we choose to go there for the thrill. I raced motorcycles in my 30s, road raced. And yes, the knees of my leathers were scuffed from skimming across the pavement like this. But this is a superbike race, and these are professional racers. I raced a much more, less powerful motorcycle. I probably looked a little bit more like this, <laughs> drive, racing along. Fortunately, in my racing career, I never looked like this. <laughs> Nor did I ever spontaneously break into break dancing in the middle of my race. <laughs> but this was a danger zone I chose to enter. When are we willing to step into a danger zone? When are we willing to go to that place that says and broadcasts, do not come in here? In the lyrics to the song, Danger Zone, it suggests that possibly we go into the danger zone because that's the only place where we can find ourselves. But I'm not sure I agree with Kenny Loggins on that. I've named a few danger zones, destruction, war, fire, pushing things to the limits. <clears throat> but in Mark, we have a widow choosing to step into a danger zone. This poor widow, which is redundancy. In this time, any widow was poor. And I'm still, I believe that Jesus has used the terms poor widow, poor widow to accentuate the fact that she was poor. And she comes in and she puts in two copper coins 
all that she has into the offering plate. Now the rich had come in too, and they'd put in large amounts. They weren't stingy. But the amounts they put in didn't put in peril their ability to provide for themselves and for those whom they were responsible for. And Jesus points out to the disciples that this woman truly is in this danger zone, putting in all that she has. Her next meal is now in question. She's doing this, placing her trust in God, not in what she has. And in our Ruth story, there's another danger zone here. Now, in Jesus' time, women didn't have many rights. They couldn't be out in public by their own. It was best if they were out in public with a male that they belonged to, a husband, a father, a son, a cousin, a brother. But if they were going to go out without a male, they needed to go out in groups of women together. Because in that time, you just weren't out alone by yourself as a woman. And women couldn't own property. For the most part, women were property, and property can't own property. So women couldn't have any property. And women couldn't speak to men in public, not even their husbands. The only, peop the only women who spoke to men in public in Jesus' time were prostitutes. So to do so, labeled yourself as that. And this was in Jesus' time. The story in Ruth is much earlier than that. It's two generations before King David, and women had even less rights at that time. And as I mentioned with the children, Ruth had a husband and two sons, but lost both of those. So now, Ruth and Naomi are unattached women. There is no male that they can cling to, no husband, no, no, no sons, no children. Neither the, neither the daughters had produced children before their husband died. There were no males. They were unattached. They were at complete risk. They were very vulnerable, like this poor widow in Mark's tale. And Naomi sees that, one, that Ruth has been very loyal to her, and her desire to be loyal and helpful to Ruth, she has a plan for finding Ruth a husband, finding her security. But this plan requires walking into the danger zone. She tells Ruth to wait until Boaz, who has shown Ruth some kindness, and so maybe Naomi's thinking there's a glimmer of chance that there's some affection there. She tells Ruth to go to the barn where the threshing, fold is, the threshing floor is after, and to bathe and put on perfume and put on her best dress, but to hide herself there and wait until Boaz has finished his work and eaten and drunk and laid down to go to sleep. And then the Bible gives us the G version of this story. Because <laughs> Naomi's advice is to go lay next to him and uncover his feet. But feet in the Old Testament are never those things at the bottom of your legs. They're about two and a half feet further north. <laughs> They refer to your genitals. So Naomi's instructions to Ruth are very risky. This plan could go well. This plan could blow up big time. Because depending upon how Boaz reacts to having this woman laying down next to him, well, he could reject her. And then her reputation would be ruined. And she would not be eligible, she would not be spousal material for any respecting man in town. She would be living in this 
unattached situation and this risky situation for the rest of her life. She stepped into the danger zone. Fortunately, it went well. Naomi's plan worked. And Boaz took her and became, she became his wife. And they bore a son, ultimately, which in the story kind of turns out to be Naomi's lost sons. Partly because Naomi is a Hebrew, Ruth is a Moab. And this is how we trace Jesus' lineage through David to himself, because Obed is the grandfather of King David. Stepped into the danger zone, both of these women. Now, sometimes I step into the danger zone. I went motorcycle racing, as I said. And there are many other danger zones out there. But when I stepped into that danger zone by racing on my motorcycle, if I, people ask me, why did you do this? Was it the speed that enthralled you? But I think what I found really interesting about racing was the fact that I was trying to balance these very large opposing forces from many different directions and trying to push the motorcycle down the track as fast as possible. And if I did this really well, I might win the race. I never did it really well, or at least I never did it well enough to win to come in first. <laughs> but if I had come in first, what would be the impact? Would the world be a better place for what I had done? My ego might be a little bit better, but probably not much else. But there's other danger places, there's danger zones. We've seen some of these photos, but I want to warn you, we have some more photos coming up. And these are even scarier, more terrific danger zones that we might be entering. The, the danger zone of offering ourselves to another person, of approaching someone else and letting them know that we not recognize them, that we care about them, that we'd like to be a friend with them. When we enter this danger zone, we could be rejected by this person. Our offering could be rejected. We could be ridiculed. So we have to step out on the line here to offer ourselves to another person. Or another danger zone is offering life to another person, to bringing forth to them the good news of Christ, of sharing with him the light that shines on us, the light that the darkness that they may be in is trying to obscure from ever entering, but to dare to open that door and show that you care, to show that God cares and that this light may come in. Another danger zone is this danger zone of caring for another, putting another's interests before your own. The Apostle Paul writes and tells us to consider others better than ourselves. How risky is this? How risky is it to reach out and care for one? And there may be birds singing in the uh, sunflower patch as well. <laughs> or this danger zone of entering another person's suffering, of willingly going to them in their downtime, in their suffering, in their pain, and being with them, even though you know you have absolutely no remedy to solve the problem, that you can't make this suffering go away the best you can do is to stand and sit silently with them 
and be present and accept their suffering as well. These are all danger zones. Are we willing to go into these danger zones? Would we step into them? Entering a dangering zone of a building, burning building to rescue someone from that burning building, yes, that may make a bigger impact on the world than my coming in first in a motorcycle race. But it's these danger zones that I think have the biggest impact on those around us and on the world that we can enter into. Because Christ, he constantly entered danger zones, didn't he? He called hypocrisy whenever he saw it. He pointed it out and said, this is wrong. He stood up to divisions, to discrimination. He stood up to the powers that be, to the rulers. And he stood up against those things, willing to take them on. Certainly a danger zone. He stepped into the danger zone of bringing about justice where justice was absent. He stepped into the danger zone of touching those that society had rejected, the blind, the lame, and for heaven's sake, he even touched lepers. And he entered the danger zone of showing the disenfranchised that they belonged, that he cared for them, and that through his care they could see that God cared for them, that they belonged, they weren't outcasts. He let them know that they were included. He entered the danger zone of proclaiming freedom for prisoners and setting the oppressed free. This is a big danger zone. Oppressors get kind of twerked when you set free those people that have been busy trying to impress or or oppress in some way or another, to lock into a prison of some form or another. But Jesus stepped into there and freed these people and frees us from our prisons, the prisons that society puts upon us, the prisons that we put upon ourselves. Christ enters that danger zone. And we are Christians. We are followers of Christ, right? So should we not do as Christ does and enter into these danger zones willingly to bring justice, to care for those in need, to stand beside the suffering, to let God's light into places where it hasn't shown for a long time? to freeing those who are imprisoned. Fred Rogers, which is Mr. Rogers, he's an ordained Presbyterian pastor, and he was ordained to his ministry of that TV show. Not ordained to some church, but he was ordained to his TV show of working with children. And he wrote one time, a high school student wrote to ask, what is the greatest event in American history? I can't say. However, I suspect, like so many great events, it was something very simple and very quiet with little or no fanfare. The really important great things are never center stage of life's drama. They're always in the wings. That's why it's so essential for us to be mindful of the humble and the deep rather than the flashy and the superficial. I firmly believe that these great events that this student asked about and that Fred Rogers talked about always involve someone willingly stepping into the danger zone. Do you dare?